each of us is born with a blemish, each with a flaw. In the crucial months before birth, when the child-to-be is taking shape, even the heart may develop imperfectly. A child may be born, and fortunately there are few, with what is called a congenital heart defect. The normal heart, the heart without imperfection, would appear something like this after birth. Within, there is a wall dividing the heart into a left and a right side. Each side is again divided by a valve. Each upper chamber is called an atrium, or sometimes an oracle. Each lower chamber, a ventricle. The blood flow can be followed better in this diagrammatic drawing of the heart by two great veins, one draining the lower and the other the upper part of the body. It flows in and fills the right atrium. Actually, the chambers on the other side of the heart work at the same time, but we will follow the passage of the blood one step at a time to avoid confusion. The valve between the two chambers is forced open and the blood flows into the right ventricle. The atrium contracts and forces the final bit of blood into the ventricle. The ventricle contracts next. This valve snaps shut and this one opens. Each contraction forces blood into the lungs. In the lungs, the blood receives its fresh supply of oxygen, which turns it bright red once again. It then flows back into the left side of the heart, filling first the atrium, then the ventricle. The atrium contracts, pushing in the last measure of blood. When the ventricle contracts, this valve will be forced closed while this one opens. The blood is sent out through the aorta to the arteries throughout the body. And this is the way the heart actually operates, both sides in unison. A child may be born with a defect in this important pumping mechanism or in the great vessels. The trouble may be so slight that he will live through his normal lifespan with no inconvenience. But the defect may be serious. It may prevent the blood from getting sufficient oxygen, causing the child to appear bluish, as this child does around the lips, a blue baby so-called, though this is rare. The child may have a defect that can be helped by surgery, or it may be of a kind that doctors have not yet learned to repair. What are some of these malformations? And what has medical science discovered about ways to correct them? One of the most common defects occurs here between the aorta carrying blood to the body and the pulmonary artery carrying blood to the lungs. Occasionally, there is an extra passageway between the two. As pressure is greater in the aorta than in the pulmonary artery, some blood is sent back to the lungs, blood that should be going out to nourish the tissues of the body. Fortunately, now it is possible by surgery to close off this passageway and completely restore a person to normal. Another serious imperfection that doctors have recently learned to repair is a narrowing of the aorta. Obviously, if the amount of blood to the tissues of the body is cut down considerably, the tissues will be starved. 
If the pinched section is fairly long, it is cut out and a portion of another blood vessel or a synthetic replacement is actually grafted in. Another place where narrowing may occur is in the pulmonary artery, often at the valve. This too can be remedied. The valve which is within the heart can be reached in various ways. One is by cutting open the pulmonary artery. The surgeon then enlarges the valve opening so that it will allow a normal flow of blood to the lungs. Sometimes a narrowing of the pulmonary artery is accompanied by other defects in the heart. For example, there may be an opening in the wall between the two ventricles, with the aorta displaced so that it lies astride the opening. Because the entrance to the pulmonary artery is so narrow, only part of the blood from this ventricle is pumped through the lungs to receive oxygen. The rest passes directly into the aorta, mixing with the blood from the other ventricle. The mixed blood going out to nourish the body tissues therefore carries too little oxygen. This is one of the conditions that causes the bluish color of the blue baby. Even this unfortunate abnormality can be helped somewhat by ingenious surgery. By cutting an artery and joining it to the pulmonary artery, for instance, some of the partly oxygenated blood that is on its way out to the body can be shunted back through the lungs. This allows more oxygen to reach the body tissues. Another defect more commonly found is in the wall between the two atria. When the hole is small, a person will probably live his normal lifespan without inconvenience. But when the opening is large, the condition may become quite serious, though in many cases there are ways of closing such openings. Medical science has made remarkable advances recently in developing means of operating within the heart itself. One way is by using a heart-lung machine that circulates and oxygenates the blood, taking over the functions of the patient's heart and lungs. The heart can then be opened and the repair made by the surgeon. It is a grave misfortune when a child must face life with an imperfect heart, but each year brings medical advances. Each year, more and more children have a chance for a complete and useful life.